All right, guys, so we are back. It's been a crazy week. All types of YouTuber events being canceled and postponed. I've been working on some things behind the scenes that I can't quite say yet, but I can say one thing. You're now looking at the new assignee to LFM Management. That's right, your boy is now signed. That just means that those doors to opportunity that we knocked on before, we're kicking those bitches down because I got the keys now. Doesn't really make sense, actually, because if I had the keys, why would I kick them down? You understand what the f I'm saying, okay? Anyway, thank you guys. I appreciate you all, and like I've said before we're just getting started but today's video we are taking a look at some training footage from none other than Hasim Rahman Jr. How he's looking in these last two weeks before the fight and I'm gonna have to address something else in this video that you guys said is super important that I don't think is. So Hasim Rahman Jr. new training footage the breakdown. Let's go. All right first impressions Hassem Rockman, we knew this, but he's fucking huge. All right, he's massive. And I'm not pausing with his back turned to us so you guys can look at the cake. So keep your eyes up, okay? Keep your eyes peeled right here. We're not doing that. Now, this is a fun Easter egg. This man right here is Augie Sanchez. He's only one of the two men to ever beat Floyd Mayweather. And yes, it was in the amateurs. And yes, Floyd beat him three times out of four. But still, man's got a win over Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. 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 A little high faint hook. Ugh. Watch the hip rotation on this hook. High feint, hook comes. Again, nice lateral, clean across. He doesn't try to rake it in. It just naturally comes out there. And that hip is popping like an elder statesman at your local nursing home. This is good technique. And again, they're going through the motions here. I don't know how familiar Hasim is with Augie as a trainer. So you heard some instruction there and, and them trying to get on the same page. It looks like this is just a fairly new session and they're working on specifics. Boom. You guys see that weight transfer? Boom, boom. Now watch, uppercut, left hook transfers back the weight. And then we go again, boom, to the body. We move forward to get explosive power off that lead leg, boom, to the body. And then comes right across with the hook up top, bang. And look where all that weight goes. It's boom, boom. The weight transfer allows you to land with big time power as you rip that lead hook across as you exit range as well. You guys can see here, look at that shoulder come up across the chin. We know at this point, Jake is going to throw a big right hand. It's his best weapon by far, and he does throw it off the counter. So you do like to see that. This is solid technique, good fundamentals from Rockman Jr. This is what you expect from a pro fighter. I love that. Mm. Did you guys hear that coaching right there from Augie Sanchez? It's so simple. It's simple stuff. But just, I, I just want you guys to listen. Step, step, step. Turn it over, turn it over, and you see the result there. Here's why that's important. Rockman Jr. is obviously tired right now, right? I, I don't know if he's done sparring before this. It seems like he's done a lot of work before this pad session, and this pad session is to accentuate him having to still perform when he's tired. One of the big problems that we saw with him versus Kenzie Morrison was him dropping his hands as he got more tired, and they know Jake and his team know this because they're bringing him down to 200. They do have the rehydration clause in there, but Agi understands what they're trying to get out of him, keeping those hands high, being defensively responsible even when he's tired, throwing with good technique even when he's tired, and finishing on those shots just like they want him to finish this fight even when he's tired. <laughs> boom, boom. Hey, hey. I love the weight transfer. He's on balance. Now we're starting to throw combinations. Love that finish on the hook. Bang. Boom, 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 boom. Hold on one second. I just got it. Why has this guy got knee pads on? Did he get his dates mixed up? Because it looks like he's dressed for a shoot for browsers.com or some adult website. I'm not sure you're in the right place, my guy. <laughs> you guys see Hassan Rockman's eyes, by the way. You don't see him looking at the pads when he's throwing. He's dead center on his coach because everything else is judged peripherally, right? But if you're looking at 20 different things at once, faints will fool you. And obviously you're gonna miss something. Find a focal point and stay there and see everything versus looking to try to find everything. You'll be better served for it. Hey, that hook. Body, now we're starting to turn it up a little bit. Now we're starting to throw some hammers. Hmm. Mmm, those body shots are looking to send ribs flying like you just handed them a can of fucking Red Bull. Good Lord. Let me see it again. Hey. 
Hey, and you see weight transfer, sit down in the lead. Bang, transfer back across. You like that. Hey, hey, I like this mitt session, I do. It's, again, it's not like the greatest display of boxing ever, and it's also not, oh, you're, this is so terrible, Jake's gonna run him over, he needs to take off the gloves and never do it again. It's kind of something where it's like, oh, there's nothing to see here other than a pro doing what he does. And speaking of nothing to see here, before we stop this video, I have to address this conspiracy that's run wild about this specific video and the things in the background. Now there's a TV right here in the background of this video and it's playing what looks to be like the full or at least a longer portion of the Hasim Rahman Jr. Jake Paul spar from a year and a half ago. But you guys came to me and said, wait, Jake gets dropped in this sparring session. Look, they leaked it. It's right there. But unfortunately, guys, I'm calling bullshit. All right, so here is the sequence. Now you can see a jab right there from Hasim, right? You see the jab and Jake looks like he tries to slip it, maybe gets clipped with it and then goes pretty low here, but I don't see any hands on the ground and they pause it, right? It's paused. I don't know if this is by chance or on purpose to make it seem like Jake went down here, but he is not on a knee there. He is clearly in a crouch stance. Again, this is paused, so it's not like he's just sitting there. It's just nothing is happening in the in the videos paused. So I, I don't know where you guys thought that Jake got dropped in this session. Because again, let's go back and see. Boom, there's the jab. Jake takes the jab, tries to avoid it, just a little late on it. And then the arm comes up from Agi Sanchez, and then the video just stays there. No knee on the ground. Just Jake in a crouched stance, right? That's all you really see. So no, I don't think Jake got dropped in this footage. And this little instance of what people sent me and said was the case is not. But all in all, like I said, this is a pro boxer doing pro boxer stuff. This wasn't meant to be a super fast paced mitt session. So for everyone saying, oh, he looks so slow and Jake's so much faster. I wouldn't go that far because you're seeing a guy going 50% maybe specifically working on his power, sitting down on shots and his technique. The man, I will say, a sim is a big dude. He is going to bring power. So again, this fight is it's interesting. But you guys let me know. Is the strategy that I've come up with that they're going to gas or try to gas Hassan Rockman Jr., is that the one that Jake and his team are going to implement? And how do they get to that point without getting caught by a quick jab or these left hooks, right hands, all these shots on balance from, again, the frame and size of a guy that is a true heavyweight coming down to fight him? Just like I don't know that, I don't know if Hassan Rockman's gas tank is going to be fully ready for this fight. So in other words, I don't have those answers, but we're only two weeks away. August 6th, I guess we'll find out.